And good morning, everyone. And yes, we are back here at 8.07 a.m. with Dave King and Matt Martin in the morning here on KFYO. And as promised, uh, with us in the studio is uh, Dr. Lawrence Skuvenick, president of Texas Tech University. Uh, that's, that's a little university here in Lubbock. <laughs> you see, I'm an LCU boy. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. But, uh, so, but we always got overshadowed by tech, and so. Well, um, but that's that's the case if you live in Lubbock, huh? Well, President Perrin is a wonderful guy, and um, his father was my history teacher. Really, well, my impressions of him, and that we've had several interactions, yeah. but nothing but positive. Yeah, it's a great family. Yeah. Well, glad to have you out this Thank morning. You. We've got a lot, a lot of things to talk about. I always. Particularly recently, always a lot of things to talk about out, out at Texas Tech. We've got uh, a new chairman of the uh, Board of Regents. That's right. Tim Lancaster, who was the vice chair, stepped into the role as chair when uh, Rick Francis announced that he'd be stepping down on Friday. Um, Tim is, I don't know if you know him, but he's a fabulous person. You know, he uh, he's from uh, Abilene. Um, he's a very calm, rational Guy, um, I saw him uh, Monday in Amarillo. We were up there for an ev- event with the uh, lieutenant governor. And then uh, afterwards, uh, we had an opportunity to make a presentation to l- the, the lieutenant governor related to the medical school. It went very well. Tim was there. He's very involved, very supportive. Uh, I think the, the environment has already... Uh, Improved, and I'm not saying that disparagingly of Rick Francis, but clearly there was a lot of uh, tension uh, and just uh, issues, disruptive issues that were co- that were a problem. Well, and then uh, and again, uh, you don't have to respond to this, but I think that he got it right. I think a lot of people were looking for maybe some different leadership in the regions. So, uh, well. <laughs> Um, they were looking for different leadership, <laughs> you know, the, and there has been quite a bit raised about the fact that is there representation among our regents from the local area. Mm-hmm. Um, so there will be three possible changes in January with uh, Rick Francis, Ron Esparza, and Tim Lancaster's terms coming to an end, and we'll see what the governor does. Uh, do you have any expectations? Well, uh, Dave, I'm... You know, they don't ask me about things like that. <laughs> uh, you and the governor are not. <laughs> no, I, I actually, uh, I, I saw the governor's wife yesterday and visited with her, and she's a wonderful lady. Um, and um, I was there with somebody who uh, is privy to those kind of discussions and uh, a person in particular who might be a candidate. But ultimately, that's a decision the governor makes, and uh, he doesn't call me. <laughs> so, um, well, as far as uh, you know, we're talking about that, and, and some of the things that came up with that were was the the vet school, and y'all y'all had some news moving forward with the vet school. So, um, at that board meeting, there was a small adjustment in the budget that relates to the design and planning of that facility. Uh, that was just kind of a minor correction to the bigger issue that had been addressed um, uh, last May. Um, we spend a lot of time working on the vet school. Um, this week, I've had a chance to visit with Senator Perry. We are very, very lucky to have him in our corner because he is adamant and uh, determined to see this happen. Um, uh, this week, I also met with um, Four Price and John Smithy, uh, talked to the lieutenant governor, and uh, was in Dallas yesterday with, with uh, hoping I could speak to the governor, but um, he was circling the airport and couldn't land because of the bad weather. <laughs> uh. But that's the reason I couldn't be at the memorial service yesterday for the Officer East. So um, we're, 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 oh yeah, and, and um, well, anyway. Uh, let, me, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, we are, how, how many weeks are we into school about? What eight or nine uh, for the, uh, for the school year? Um, you know, you, you think I'd have an answer for that question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
we're, we're into the semester. I think we're, I just, I, I want, I I think just, we're week seven of the football season. I'm curious to know. Is, are things going well? Are they, is, there, is there anything popped up that's, uh, that was a surprise or that's, that's going to need uh, addressing? You know, we just had Dr. Rollo on uh, mm-hmm. from LISD, mm-hmm. superintendent. Right. And they're going through the, their biggest issue right now is, is school safety. And I'm just wondering, uh, do you feel comfortable that that uh, we have that situation taken care of out at Tech? Uh, that's an incredibly serious issue. Um, mm. In light of what happened last year with the, the tragic uh, death of Officer East, we enlisted the, the DPS to do an extensive study. Right of all practices and policies at Texas Tech, and I received that report last spring. Um, There there were some freedom of information requests to get that report, but um, the state attorney general determined that some of that was privileged information because it would compromise the uh, practices at the university. But what I can say is uh, we started actually doing this maybe two years ago uh, we have installed cameras. Uh, we now have a um, modified poly- ability to lock down all dorms and facilities centrally. That wasn't the case when that happened with Officer East. They've reviewed policies in the police department that relate to the processing of people when they're taken into custody because of the obvious issue mm-hmm. that everybody's wondered about and how that gun got in there. And those are the kind of things I can't so, get into. Can, and, can you talk about uh, the alert system? Have they fixed the problem uh, that put the delay in the alert system and the alerts being yeah. getting out in well, a timely manner? That came up last week. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know if you, you may have been aware that on Thursday, while we were oh. having a board meeting, they were practicing, mm-hmm. and somebody um, pushed the wrong button. <laughs> they practiced in the wrong way. <laughs> Uh, now try to, it, they locked down the campus. Did they so there we are in a very important meeting with our regents or an executive session discussing the changes that ultimately came out. It was not a good – I had been in better places. So did we fire that person? <laughs> no. It was a student, wasn't it? I think. Well, no. It was actually somebody uh, – it was a dispatcher. But the okay. point is this. We had a meeting the next morning at 7.30. I asked for a report from both uh, Ron Phillips and from the Office of – communications as to what happened uh, so we're going to make sure that when they're in safe mode it means safe mode and those kind of things can't uh, occur but what was bothersome was the fact that in my case I received a notification at 104 and it was more than almost 25 minutes when I received the email saying that it was a false alarm now some got it instantly and we met with IT to see what's going on there. So the, communicating through email is not the best way to notify people. Your text is the best way. So we actually issued a memo to the campus community to please provide the information so we can get this through you through a text. Mm-hmm. The phone, I got the phone call right away. So, but, but email, because as they explained it, there could be many different servers they have to go through, and that puts a delay in the system. It seems to be a problem, and, and they're continuing to look at it, but you need to be able to reach people through text messages, phone, and email, and probably the email is the worst way to get yeah. it. Uh, let's take a quick break and then come back with more um, after this. News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM. This is KFYL Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin, 821, uh, 822 AM now. And uh, we're back live with Dr. Lawrence Skubinick, president of Texas Tech University. Yeah. And uh, so y'all had a, recently had a memorial for uh, Officer Floyd East Jr. And uh, what, what, that was on campus, I'm, that I'm was guessing. Yesterday, um, yeah, I, it was yesterday. I truly a hate it. It was. Um, a year ago, uh, we gathered there one evening, and there were thousands of students and staff and faculty and community members, and um, it was an experience that I don't think people will forget. And I am glad that the university community hasn't forgotten. that We had the event yesterday. I truly regretted not being there, but I was called to Dallas because of the issues I mentioned related to the, the vet school. Um, 
it it um, that will always be a part of our history. And I, I made a comment visiting with somebody recently. Well, some days we forget about Officer East, but you think of that family that they're living with that every day. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, so we, we have, as you raised the point earlier, we've made changes in our safety protocols, our policies, and uh, but um, at the same time, I do think that the tech community revealed a really wonderful characteristic that it has. Uh, beyond the support they did want to provide and to the, that family, what they did for each other, because many people were traumatized by that. And uh, uh, you, you really get a sense of what the Texas Tech family is like when we come together at events like that. And so Ted Mitchell was there, um, the provost spoke, and uh, the chief spoke. And uh, um, it's a very tragic part of our history. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, we were talking about the representatives who are supporting us in the vet school, and I realized I did mention a very important person, John Frulo. He was at that event yesterday, and uh, he texted me and said, hey, I parked outside your office. Make sure I don't get towed. <laughs> so, did you call and get him towed? No. Oh, okay. I said, tell us what you have, and we'll make sure. of it. So I imagine... And that, that, that's a privilege we'd extend to anybody. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there, there is, a, in the AJ, there's a story about that y'all are uh, looking at some projects coming soon, one being a, a basketball practice uh, place. But I have a question. Y'all are going to have an athletic uh, cafeteria is what y'all are looking yeah. at making. Yeah. Why do you, do they get separated from yeah. the other students? Yeah, Matt, I heard you discussing yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah I, I, um, so... Uh, is it a a security issue no it's not a security issue when athletes are recruited they're sold a total package we're going to attend to your academic uh, progress your athletic development your personal development and they have the Marshall Sharp Leadership Academy there which is an important part of that and you might say why do you do that for athletes but there are dining facilities for students as well. Athletes have a very different type of schedule. Uh, you know, there, there's a certain number of hours they can be engaged in practice, and um, they put in more time than that. I mean, of, of their own choice as they work out. They have traveling uh, obligations. Uh, but also, um, you have to realize that a lot of the athletes that are recruited – Uh, don't come from backgrounds that maybe would allow them to go out and always get the kind of nutrition and food they need. And there's a lot of physical demands put on them. And so this really is just part of the philosophy that Kirby and the coaches and that staff have about tending to the complete support for those students. And one thing you always have to keep in mind is everything that's built over there for athletics is not done with state dollars. Right. Donations. Donations. So in this case, Don and Kay Cash are providing the, fac- the money for that. And, um, th- you know, and another thing to keep in mind is there are those out there, and there's legal cases being raised about athletes are take uh, need a greater share of the revenue they generate for these universities. Mm-hmm. And so they're making the university money. Mm-hmm. And that's not the reason you give them food, but it's not as if uh, they're taking, taking, taking. They're giving a lot to the school. Is the food there going to be better? I mean, if I go to the university, should I want to go to the athletic? Matt, well, Matt you cannot go eat in the athletic I, farm. Hey, no. I, hey, Matt, you want to go eat over there? I bet it could be arranged. <laughs> when, now, When it's made, I might. <laughs> uh, they have a nutritionist that really watches what they eat and controls their fat content and all that. You, you may not like it. No. It could be a lot of vegetables. <laughs> so uh, we, we do want to get into the legislative session where— Running a little low on time. We have about yeah. a minute and a half. Yeah, well, so we about two weeks ago we were there uh, to present our legislative appropriation requests. So there's the you know the general um, issue that relates to the formula, and you make your case for your exceptional items, which included the vet school. So we have 4.17 uh, in our base budget from the last session, and we asked for an additional 13 million that would get us through the next biennium. 
And so what we're going to have to be balancing in the next coming weeks is uh, lining up our support financially in the in the Senate and the House, and then deciding when to go to the coordinating board to make that proposal. Mm-hmm. And that's what, and we're doing a lot of discussion about that now in meetings as well. Yeah. But everything's on track. Okay. Uh, uh, things look pretty good right now. That's going to be about all of our time. Uh, so as always, we appreciate you. you coming out. Thank both. I thank both of you. I appreciate it. You bet. We appreciate you. So that's going to put uh, a bow on the show for a Wednesday edition. We uh, hope you'll be back with us again in the morning about 620. We'll do it again. Uh, Everyone needs to go out there and have a great Wednesday. Uh, Enjoy the sunshine today.